Well, hello there. On uh, today's video, we're going to talk about the differences between being an independent contractor versus an employee. And I know that I get this asked, poof, I don't know how many times throughout all the years that I've been a tax accountant. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump in and hopefully I can make it as brief as possible. That way you can hopefully comprehend what the difference is. Um, and what are your responsibilities, right? So let's start with the employee status, right? Um, employee status is quite simple. Uh, you work for one single uh, company, right? And that employer um, has the responsibility to actually um, keep track of deducting your taxes and submit it to Internal Revenue Services. Now, part of those withholding taxes um, that you do um, when you start a new job, right? Uh, and that comes with the W, um, actually, um, the W-4 form uh, is where you put whether you're um, deducting as single as one, marry as one, or, or zero, or perhaps two, depending. Now remember, uh, when you follow that form, um, a lot of people make a lot of mistakes with that, and they hear that, well, if I put, you know, I have three dependents, then of course I'm gonna get, uh, you know, a bigger out paycheck, and it's true, but watch out with that because that can backfire you when you file your return. And I see that happen quite often uh, where, yes, you're going to have a, a, a more of a fat, you know, paycheck coming in because you're going to get more money. Um, but at the end, it might hit you hard, especially if it's true that you do not have independence. Okay. Uh, now, independence can be anyone from not only your children, it could be your stepchildren, it could be your um, your parents, your step-parents, that's right. Um, and not only can you file as a head of household when you do have a dependent, okay? So that's really important to understand because, again, as an employee, your employer deducts automatically the taxes through the payroll system, um, so it's less for you to worry about, right? Um, and like I said, when you file your return, then depending on the status that you are, which can be only single, you could be married, finally join me, you could be separated, or you could be head of household. Those are the four main categories, okay? And there's another one, which is fifth one, uh, which is really being a widow or widow. Um, so other than that, it's easy, right? I mean, again, you as an employee, got nothing to worry about. Everything's being deducted automatically, everything's being submitted. Uh, not only your Social Security and Medicare portion, but also your income tax, which is your federal tax, all right, for your earned income. Now, what happens with independent contractors? And I see this happen a lot since the most recent changes with uh, President Trump as we're recording this. Um, and one of the things is that he actually removed, um, you know, the personal exemptions that you used to get when you file a return, that's gone, that's history um, until, well, they decide to put it back. Um, but for, in the meantime, as we're recording this, um, this is gonna be effective for the next, you know, few years. And the thing is that we only have what's considered a standard deduction. Okay, there's no more personal exemptions like we used to have. Uh, some of it could be equal as much as 4,000 per year. Um, so now what's gonna happen is as an independent contractor, uh, you have a bigger responsibility over your shoulders, by the way. Um, but there's pros and cons, right? And the good news is about being self-employed or called independent contractors is the fact that now you get a gross check not a paycheck you get a check and that could be issued to your name directly and that's how you are considered an independent contractor in self-employed responsibility to pay your taxes now a lot of these taxes can be paid quarterly absolutely i know that most independent contractors don't do that but the reality is it is convenient especially if you know that you're gonna owe more than a thousand dollars um in 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 self-employment taxes again social security and medicare so medicare is 2.9 
okay? And then you have the other portion, I'm checking here my notes to make sure, and then the other one's 12.4. So combined together, Social Security and Medicare, that combined at 15.3. Yeah, that's almost over 15%, you're absolutely right. And that's your responsibility, so on a quarterly basis, you can actually pay these taxes. That way you don't get hit at the end when you file your tax return the following year, okay? So it, it does benefit a lot, um, especially if you that kind of person that you just don't wanna get really big tax bill um, and you wanna have you know a little more peace of mind, this is a good system. Uh, you can use the form 1040ES, uh, E as Elizabeth, S as a Sam, um, and you can get those and download it, by the way, online. They're completely free. Um, you can go to Internal Revenue Services, uh, you know, Gov um, website and download it there. Uh, you can make your payments still by morning order chat, but especially you can do it electronically through a credit card. They might charge you a small fee, uh, but I think it's convenience. And, uh, you know, as long as you have the confirmation that you have been making those payments, that's great. Now, remember, those quarterly payments, okay, are only due in a quarterly basis, meaning, uh, you know, if you want to, until you file your return, but I don't think it's really convenient, like I said, except you, you don't mind paying a big bill, <laughs> and possibly even a penalty that can charge you, because again, you, the, the system in, in from the U.S. government is that you pay taxes as you earn the money, Okay, so that's sort of like, imagine you being an employee and going to your employer and say to your boss, hey, by the way, I don't want you to deduct my uh, Social Security and Medicare and neither my federal taxes. Uh, let me wait until next year. Well, that wouldn't be a fair situation, would it? Because that's what's happening a lot with, by the way, with independent contractors. They're waiting till last minute and they think they can kind of get away with it, but it really backsfire them. So I want to do the best for you and give you a good recommendation is, it doesn't take much, like I said. Um, so you are responsible for that. Now remember, your federal tax, which is considered your income tax, uh, that's something that you're gonna pay when you file the return. So again, if you pay your Social Security your Medicare now, all you have to worry about paying your income tax, which is your federal tax, in your during your your return okay so hopefully i made that clear enough um it's two different type of taxes all right so the other thing i'm going to mention really briefly here um is the huge benefit now you're going to say well now i have to pay the full amount in 15.3 that's a lot of money right but here's the good news and a lot of people misunderstand this is that because you're self-employed you do have the ability uh, to claim 50% off out of that. That's right. So you can claim half of that 15.3 as a deduction when you file your self-employment tax. So that's code form SE, okay? And that's during the time that you're filing your return. So even though you're paying throughout the year on a quarterly basis, the full 15.3, you are getting a deduction when you file your return. Fair enough, right? Because remember, if you're an employee, your employer's paying that half, so you're gonna get that half also as an independent contractor when you file your return. So it's all about keeping track. Another thing I'm gonna tell self, to self-employed, especially this is, and I know there's been a lot of shift, a lot of people out there that used to be employees, they have actually been converted to, to be an independent contractor. Some of them did agree voluntarily and others were unfortunately forced to become independent contractors. Um, I'm not gonna get into the legality. Um, the, obviously there's something called DOL, which is Department of Labor. And technically uh, employers are not supposed to do that. If you were an employee and uh, now the employer decided to shift you to become independent contractor because it's convenient because of the self-employment taxes and everything else. Um, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, some legality issues that they can have because of that. Um, so it's always important that you have things on writing and in a clear understanding with the company that you're going to work with. What is your true uh, responsibility? Are you considered an employee? Meaning they're going to be deducting your taxes, right? Which is so beneficial and you don't have to worry about it. Or are you going to be an independent contractor? All right, and what I recommend is 
that if you are going to be an independent contractor, you can deduct your, ta your, your, your expenses, which is another big benefit. You cannot do that as an employee, right? You cannot. So um, if you have commute going from your uh, you know, uh, work location, back and forth, you can deduct it, okay, as an independent contractor, but not as an employee. So, you know, there are pros and cons, like I said. So yeah, you have the responsibility of keeping track of your expenses. You have the quarterly taxes. Uh, you have to file Schedule C when you file your return. Um, and you might have more responsibility in that aspect, but you also get some benefits. So I think it works out. It, hopefully uh, you, you, you agree with me in that sense. Uh, but again, it is, like I said, uh, you know, responsibility you have to have a ratio. So anyhow, I hope my information has been valuable. Um, I've been doing YouTube videos and I have actually a podcast for the past two years. Um, my name is Liz Soria and uh, I am a tax advisor accountant and uh, I'm always here to serve everyone to, you know, help you, guide you through the correct path because um, unfortunately now in these days, anyone can really um, create a, a video um, and a lot of times even a podcast and unfortunately they do like experience and skills um, in the field. So please be cautious about who you listen to and who you watch you know, videos because you want to know someone that has truly the background, has studied it for it and understands you know, the, the tax codes because um, it's taken me over 14 years uh, in student learning. Uh, and by the way, for independent contractors, I have a few years ago, um, and there's another video that's called sole proprietor versus independent contractor because I always get that also asked many times and you might want to look into that, all right? And the reason behind that is because as a sole proprietor, usually you work for multiple companies. As an independent contractor, you usually work for one company. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell, just to help you a little bit define the two terminologies there. But anyhow, I hope this video, like I said, somehow has clear, um, you know, your, your doubts in how things work. And like I said, as long as you pay your taxes, you've got nothing to worry about, no penalties, no interest. Uh, but if you don't, then uh, it's going to hurt you at the end. And I always try to tell people um, to stay out of trouble. Uh, because at the end, it really isn't worth it. It really, really isn't. So um, just take care of your taxes. And if you need any assistance, I know a lot of you are probably jumping in. Um, I'm a QuickBooks certified provisor for more than 10 years. Um, if you want to have some assistance of having your, uh, you know, um, uh, expenses set up in QuickBooks, or perhaps we, you might want to just have a spreadsheet because I know a lot of you, um, you know, you're in, tight, in a tight budget. Um, and what happens is that you need to keep track of those expenses. Remember I told you the gas, any other, uh, you know, office expenses you might have, even your phone, that's right, all those kind of things. And what we've done is we created a really awesome, it's called a 1099, I'm sorry, it's called the Startup 1099 Package. And that one includes uh, a really um, detailed um, Excel sheet that comes with a 12 months in separate per month and then you have a year to date sheet. And what happens is it has all the expenses that you don't need to think about. Actually, we have actually done the work for you. We have created that spreadsheet where it shows literally how many expenses you can have, if it's applicable to you, because every industry is different, right? But you have everything there in each one of them, some of them, I'm sorry, R is linked to the IRS website, that's right. So if you need to go in depth and look at the detail of that category expense, you can click on that spreadsheet and it takes you directly to Internal Revenue website. Awesome, right? Um, so it includes that, includes the spreadsheet. It also includes, by the way, the quarterly vouchers. We give you all the instructions, we give you the information, how you can pay, where you can pay. We even give you some of the cal calculators that you can go online and do the estimation, that way you can do it properly, all right? Plus it will include a 30 minute phone consultation with me, all right, directly with me as an accountant. So um, it's very feasible, the information is gonna be on the description box. So again, if you're um, concerned about praying properly your taxes, keeping track of your expenses, do it now, and this is what my last recommendation is, do it on a monthly basis, don't wait, a couple months because by the time 
taxes are due and your return, you're not going to have, or if it, you are going to have the time, it's going to be very, very overwhelming for you to go back and go through all your receipts and all your expenses. If you have a package like this, you can have the spreadsheet, enter your expenses in a month-to-month -month basis. That way, you're ready to go when you have to file your tax return. Anyhow, this is Lissory again, your tax advisor accountant. And like I said, we're here for you and my team. And like I said, all the description information is below uh, in the box. And um, also for you, some of you who are listening through my tax advisor and business success podcast, uh, the information is going to be there available too. So anyhow, I wish you the very best and a lot of success. And once again, thank you so much. And until the next video.